Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about M365 groups and show you how to create them and what all options we have to restrict users permission on creating M365 groups. So the first type of group is security group which is uh, used to assign permission to files, folders and other objects. The second one is distribution group which is used to send email to a list of people. The third one is a mail enabled security group which is a combination of security group and distribution group. And the fourth one is M365 group. M365 group is used for collaboration. You can send email to M365 group and all the users will receive it. It also has a shared Outlook calendar, SharePoint document library, planner, OneNote notebook and Teams uh, which is optional. Let us see how to create M365 groups. So, so this is my Microsoft portal here under groups. I will go to active groups and here you can click on add a group and create the M365 group. Out of the four options, the first one is Microsoft 365. Here you will specify a group name. So I would do it uh, a group one. Then you have to specify who would be the owner of that group. So I will provide two owners here. Then the group email address. Here are the privacy options with public. It means that anyone can see what is uh, inside that uh, group and uh, they can also join the group without uh, any approval. With private, only members who are part of that group can see the group content like SharePoint site, planner, calendar, teams. And anyone who wants to join that group requires a permission from group owner. Right? This option allows us to create a teams for this group. We can enable it later as well. So I'm going to uncheck this for now and just create M365 group. I could see the group in the console here. I could see the group email address. The type is Microsoft 365, but the team status is uh, blank here. So let us click on the group and see the properties. So it's showing the general information about the group, the email address, the group name. Here uh, we can add members from here and we can also manage and add owners to the group. So under general settings, the first option is allow external senders to email to this group. So if I check this, then external people who are not part of the organization can send email to this group. So I'm going to check this. Send copies of group conversation and events to group members. This option selected any group conversation or event is not only visible in groups tab, but also user gets an email in their inbox. This option hides it from the gal. I'm going to save these settings under Microsoft Teams. I could click on create a team and this will create a team for this group. So now Teams has also been created. And if I go back to the portal here and refresh it, I could see the team status. Here the team status is showing. Now the group has Microsoft Teams connected. Let me add a member to this group as well. So I'll go to the members tab. So I have added a member called uh, mail user one. I have logged on to Outlook with my mail user one, which was made part of that uh, a group one under groups. I could see my group here and I could click on send email and send email to all the people who are part of this group. I could go to my group files. So this is still setting up my SharePoint document library. It will take few minutes. I could go to group calendar, which would be shared outlook calendar. I could go to notebook planner, my SharePoint site and under settings. Here I could select uh, what all information I want to receive in my inbox. Normally you will see everything under your groups and uh, will receive an email as well in your inbox but you can disable it so i could select don't receive any group messages so nothing would come in my inbox i will have to go under groups and view whatever is there 
I could also leave the group from here. Other options I have here is I can go to new group and I can create a M365 group from here. By default, all the users uh, can create uh, M365 groups from Outlook. I could go to discover group. I could search for the groups in my organization and request to join them. I could go to manage groups. Here I could see what all groups I am part of. If I am owner of any group, I could add members to that group. I could leave that group. I could create a new group from here as well. Let me create a new group from here. So I'm going, I will go to new group and we'll create a new group. I'll name it M group one. So if you see the name of the group is coming as Anu dash M group one. However, I'm typing M group one. So I will show you the option where we can add a prefix and a suffix to a group name created by non admin users which I have already enabled. So that is why I'm getting this option. So I will not add any member for now. So that is how you can also create your own groups here. Now under owner, I could see that my group is here, Anu-M group one. I could add members from here, which are a part of my organization. I could also add guest users which are not part of my organization so i could select uh, let's say for example this gmail address and i can click on add i could also click on invite others and use this link and send to others and they can join the group using this link people in my organization can go to their outlook as well and under groups they can go to discover groups and search for this group by the name and they can request the joining of this group so currently i am joined to these groups so i am seeing these options here other people can go to their outlook and go to discover groups and search for the group which i created if they do not have the link they can click on request to join So for example, they can click here and ask for a request to join. As this was a private group, so the owner has to approve the joining. Had it been a public group, then they would have automatically joined. I could see that uh, the request has come in my inbox to approve the joining of other users. So I could click on approve or decline here. So I have clicked on approve and if I go to manage groups. Now I could see three members uh, part of this group. One of the important security consideration here is that uh, I was uh, able to add a guest user which was uh, not part of my organization. I invited uh, a Gmail user. So how do we block that? In M365 admin center, we can go to settings. We can go to org settings. And here we will go under Microsoft 365 groups. So these are the options uh, for guest users. So first one is let group owners add people outside your organization to Microsoft 365 groups as guest. So if I uncheck it, they won't be able to add the guest users. The second option is let guest users group member access group content. So if I uncheck this option, then still the guest users can be added to Microsoft 365 groups as guest, but they won't be able to access any content. So they will only be able to access the content which has been specifically addressed to them. So they won't see the group emails or group content they only be able to access files that were directly shared with them. Another setting we saw was when I created the group, it added a prefix anu dash. So we can specify prefix and uh, suffix under the naming policy. So we will open Azure AD groups and under naming policy, we can specify a CSV file here as well, which contain blocked uh, words. So these block words, users won't be able to specify when they are creating group. Under group naming convention, we can specify a prefix and a suffix. So which by default will get added to the M365 group. 
created by users the point to note here is that this prefix and suffix is applicable if a group has been created by a normal user but not by a global admin another important setting here is expiration so as users are allowed to create m365 groups and could be in your organization it could happen that you have too many groups to manage and many of them are not being used so you can specify a group lifetime after which the group expires so if the group does not receive any user activity then the group will expire the owners of that group get the email before the expiry so they can extend the group for example if there is a group which doesn't have any owner or the owner has left the organization then in that case you can specify a list of uh, email addresses here who will get a notification for any group which doesn't have any owner and you have the option here to apply this policy to all the m365 groups to selected ones or none of them and any group which uh, expires and gets deleted after these many days can also be restored within 30 days from the deleted groups container in m365 admin center so if i go to m365 admin center under deleted groups within 30 days it can be recovered under general we have some uh, self-service group management options so let us talk about them The first option is owners can manage group membership request in the access panel. So currently this is set to yes. So what it does is that if a user requests to join a group, then the owners of that group can manage that access uh, permission through the access panel. So in the access panel, they will get a notification from where they can allow or deny the user to join the group. So let us see a demo of that. I'm creating an admin group one private and I'm making myself as the owner. Here I have logged on to the access panel using mail user one and I will go to my groups. Click on join group and look for the group which I just created admin group one. and I'm requesting access to that group. Here is the access panel for the admin group one owner account, which is Anubhav Sharma. So I requested from mail user one account to be part of the admin group one and under access panel, if I go under my groups, here I could see a notification where mail user one has requested to join admin group one. In my email if I go I do not see any email notification for me to join the group so I would allow it here approve and I will create another group here I'm creating another group called admin group 2 and this time I'm going to request the access again and show you the difference here I am with my mail user 1 and now I'm going to request access to admin group 2 which I created but I'm not going to request the access from here I'm going to request the access from my email so I will go under groups go to discover groups and search for admin group 2 so I'm already part of admin group 1 so I'm going to request access to admin group 2 and I have click on send Now here under my owner account of uh, admin group 2 which is Anubhav Sharma, if I go under my groups, I do not see a notification here which I got earlier when I, the user requested to join admin group 1 but now I am not getting it from admin uh, for admin group 2 but if I go under email, here I could see that mail user 1 would like to join your group which is uh, admin group 2. So what happens here is the if the user requests the access from access panel, then the owner of the group gets the notification here to allow or disallow a user to join that group. Um, but if a user requests it from Outlook, then they get an email to approve or decline. So I'm going to approve it from here. So 
So this option restrict user ability to access group features in access panel. Here I can restrict the user's ability to request access to a group from access panel. They will still be able to request the group membership from Outlook under groups, but from access panel, it would be denied. So I could click on save and show you the difference now. So now under my access panel for my mail user one, if I go under my apps and go to my groups, so I should not be able to access it. So the functionality is now not enabled. So these two options of self-service group management only apply to access panel. So this does not apply to the groups tab in Outlook. So that would still work. These two options here, uh, they specify whether a normal user can create a security group in Azure portal. And this is for whether they can create M365 group in Azure portals. So currently it is set to yes. So let us see if our user is able to create security group and M365 group in Azure portal. I'm logged into Azure portal with my mail user one account. And if I go to groups, I could click on new group here and I get the option to create M365 group as well as security group. Here also we can create M365 group. We can specify the group name, group email address, group description, but cannot specify whether it's a private or a public group. But one advantage of uh, Azure AD group creation is that we can create dynamic groups. So if you already have a group created in M365 portal, then you can change it to dynamic group. So here is my admin group one, which I created. Uh, I'm logged in with my global admin account. So this is a M365 group. And if I go to properties, I can change the membership type from assigned to dynamic user and add a dynamic query. So this option was not present in the M365 portal. So you could create the group in M365 portal, select whether it's private, public, create teams, and then you can come here and change it to a dynamic membership instead of an assigned one. Now let me block the group creation for security as well as M365 group and see what effect does it have. So back to my normal user mail user one in the Azure portal. So I have blocked the access to create security and M365 group. So now I do not see an option to create security or M365 group, but what if I go to my apps and go under my groups? Here also, I do not see an option to create uh, security or M365 group. How about my email? If I go under email and go under groups and click on new group, Let me try creating a group test. So I am able to create the group from my Outlook. So similarly, if I go to Teams and under Teams, if I try to create a group, let's see whether that works or not. I'm getting the option of private and public test group one one one. Another important point to note here is that whenever we are creating a M365 group, we get the option whether we want to create teams with it or not. But if we go under teams and create uh, teams here, it by default creates a M365 group in the background with teams in it. So even though I have settings here, which block the security group creation and M365 group creation, I am able to create groups in Outlook and Teams, but not in uh, Access Panel or Azure Portal. So this option only works for Access Panel and Azure Portal, but not in the Outlook or Teams. So I hope you liked my video on M365 groups. And uh, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.